Okay, so it is apple butter time. And I do call this bedtime apple butter because it is 11.30 and I'm fixing to go to bed. And this stuff can cook for 10 hours in the crock pot on low. And what I did was peeled and cored the apples and cut them into quarters. And I'm going to put two cups of water. Now last time I did it, I put one cup of water and one cup of apple juice, which I'm out of apple juice, so I hope it still tastes the same. So it's just gonna be two cups of water as opposed to um, one of each. All right, so I'm, I put all the apples in there and I'm gonna add my water. Now I won't have to add any other ingredients until in the morning. And then after 10 hours, I will puree the mixture with my um, immersion blender and I'll show y'all how I do that. So I will touch base with you guys in the morning. And this is really simple. I think maybe last time I did it, I got up once in the night and stirred them, but they're gonna be on low. And I'll be smelling them when I wake up. Good morning. So I have got the apple butter going and it started it last night at 11.30 because I like to cook it overnight and let it um, cook in the crock pot for about 10 hours on low. And all the apples are soft and ready to be blended. So I have a KitchenAid immersion blender which works great because you can just take the end off and clean it. Put it on here and put it down in here. And so you want to drop it into the mixture, and I just do it in the crock pot. And I do it to the consistency that I like my apple butter. You know, you may like yours a little bit more pureed than I do. Alright, so here's the immersion blender, and it works great. I really, I really do love this. I bought it last summer. And I just kind of put it down in different spots. I don't go crazy at first because I don't want it to puree it all the way. I like a little bit of consistency. But it will move around like that. It's, it's, it's very easy to do. I use it for lots of other things. Because you really don't even have to take it out of here. Once you do this, you continue to let this cook for a couple more hours so I didn't have to take it out and put it back in. Just trying to look to see. I don't want any big chunks in it. And this is a really large crock pot. I'm not sure what the exact size on it is, but it is um, the Hamilton Beach. And it was the largest one I could find. And I can make tomato sauce in here and my applesauce or apple butter. And I do love this one. Um, you can also use a roaster if you, you know, have a really large amount. But I thought about getting me another one of these. That, well, I'll have two when I'm making tomato sauces in the summer, and I've got quite a few of them. Okay, so this is cooked overnight in the crock pot, and I have just um, pureed the mixture. Now the next step is to add four cups of sugar lots of sugar and I usually do like a taste test just to make sure that you know it's it's what we like you might like something different so you could put a little more a little less and the same with the cinnamon that's going in here you might you might want a little more cinnamon so the next step is two teaspoons of cinnamon And I couldn't find like ground cloves. That's what it calls for. So I bought whole cloves and I crushed mine up. And I did it last time and it was perfectly fine. Ooh, it smells good. Okay, so this is, this is all you put in it. And then like I said, you might have to adjust some of the ingredients if you want it to taste just a little bit differently. And at this point, what we're going to do, instead of covering it like I did last night, you're going to leave the lid off and you're going to let it cook for another two hours so this mixture will thicken up. 
So basically you're wanting it to thicken up to where it mounds on a spoon. And then you do want to stir frequently so it does not stick. And once this two hours is up, you're ready to do your canning process, which is, which is a water bath canning. And if you don't have a canner, you can do it in a large pot. Um, I'm going to do mine in an electric canner, and I'll show you all how I do that. It's, it's very easy. All right, so I'm headed to church this morning, and I will continue this process when I get back. Cause it's got to cook anyways for a couple hours, and I will show you all what I do next. All right, I'm back from church, and the apple butter looks like it's ready. It's thickened up. It mounds on a spoon. And it tastes amazing. All right, so I've got some of my stuff out to get ready for the water bath canning. So these are very helpful to put on top of a jar to ladle the liquid into without spilling it on the jar. This just helps you handle the jar while it's hot, getting it out of the canner and putting it in there need a ladle. Now I put my water on simmer and I'm simmering the lids and rings. I use Tattler's because last year it was really hard to find the lids in jars and I think maybe this year as well. So these are reusable and I love them. And I'm just, and I'm just warming up my jars. You can also do this in the oven on 200 degrees or in the dishwasher but I've washed them, sanitized them, and just getting them kind of warm. All right, it's time to ladle into the jars. Now, I advise you all get a funnel for less mess, and they also have measurements, and you can also buy, go by the jar lines to get measurements as well as far as how far you want to fill the liquid into the jar. So this recipe calls for a quarter inch. Now, I did it last year a half inch because I'm using the Tatler lids, and that was what was recommended on their website. They may have changed that now, but I'm going to go with that because it worked really good last year. Um, another thing is, is they make a, a ball canning book, and it has lots of information in it. Very, very good information about you know how to start up canning and just all kinds of recipes. And I find this very valuable, and I have to look at it several times. Sometimes when I'm you know learning something new, or when I go from you know last year to this year, I can't quite remember exactly how to do everything. So, a very valuable book. Now you want to wipe the rim of the jar because you want it clean. And I use a skewer to get the bubbles out, get the air bubbles. And they're ready for the lids. So, get you some tongs, and these have two pieces to them, and I used them last year so they had grooves on them, and I used them last year so they had grooves on them, so I'm going to use the opposite side. Now with these, you don't tighten them as tight as you do your regular canning lids, the metal ones. You want to put these on. Now when the jar turns, that's it. That's all you do with these. You may think, you may think oh, that's it's not tight enough. But it is. I've done it a bunch of times and it works out. Okay, so... I don't know how many of y'all out there have canned before, but this is an electric canner. Um, it is a Nesco, and I got brave enough to buy it last year and try it out. And it works so great. So great that I bought two of them so I could can, you know, a batch here while I've got this one cooling off, and then I've got another one going. So it just works awesome, and it's so easy to do. So this one does high pressure canning for like vegetables, green beans, and things like that. 
and it also does water bath. So obviously I'm going to do a water bath on this because it's apple butter and you don't have to high pressure can that. So I'm going to fill that up and you want to fill it up above the lids. if you are doing a water bath. And if you decide to purchase one of these, they have a Facebook group that is very helpful of um, people that use these. And they'll give you lots of tips and tricks and help you with you know the instructions if the manual's not quite as clear to you. So I did get some help last year from that group. But once I figured it out, super easy. Now, the time for these is 10 minutes, and that says in the ball canning book, so I go by those guidelines. And what you want to do is close the lid, and it locks. Now, there is a... Now, this is the pressure valve, so they make one, another one that's green for um, higher altitudes. Mine was right on the line, so I went with this one, the lower altitude one and because we're right close to a thousand feet you want to set it to exhaust and it says it in the instructions and then you want to press the time button actually the first thing i want to do is press water bath steam very easy and then you're going to press the time we're going to go up to 10 minutes And just you want to make sure that that limiting valve, that pressure valve, is set to exhaust. And then the next thing you want to do after you've set water bath steam and the time, you want to press start. Now, um, the dial is going to rotate. And it's going to begin to rotate until it starts to boil inside. And it could take 20 to 25 minutes before it comes up to boiling. And then you're going to see a constant steam coming from that exhaust valve. And then at that point, so you can kind of, kind of want to stay, so you're going to kind of want to stay in here and watch it. But once you see a constant stream of steam, then you're going to press start again. And that's going to activate the 10 minute timer. Now when the boiling is complete, you're going to want to turn the lid an eighth of a turn clockwise just to open it and then carefully remove the jars and I recommend you know that you don't put your head over this thing whenever you open it up just kind of let the steam come out um, use some gloves some mitts and the jar handler tool and then you will want to let them cool you know for 12 to 24 hours so another thing is, is whenever you take these jars out and you go take them to cool you let them sit for about five minutes and then you want to tighten the rings as tight as you can get them, just hand tight, just really tight. You know, use use your mittens or put a, a rag or a towel over top of them because they're going to be very hot. But tighten, you know, the, the rings as tight as you can get them, let them cool 12 to 24 hours and then you're going to take the rings off. And everything should be um, sealed and good. When you take the rings off, you can lift up on the white lid, lift the jar up, you know, a couple inches and if it's sealed, it will be, you know, it won't, it'll be tight on there. And you can also see a little indention on the top of the lid, and you'll know they're sealed as well. They don't pop like the metal lids, but you can see that little, little indention. Okay, so the time is up, and I unplug the canner. I'm going to switch it to open, and I kind of always just, I kind of stand away from it and just, so that steam don't hit me in the face. Alright, it looks good. We're going to take them out and bring them to the table. This is where this tool comes in very handy. Alright, I'm going to set them here. Sit until they quit bubbling, usually about five minutes, and then tighten the rings up really well, very tight, and then I keep a towel over them and I let them sit for 12 to 24 hours until they've cooled and then we'll take the rings off and then they're ready. You can store them in your pantry and they don't have to be refrigerated and they'll last quite a while. So they look amazing and you can see the indention on the top of the jar. If you looked at the lid before, 
they were more flat so um, once you do it several times you'll kind of know what to look for and how it kind of dips down just a little bit and that has created a very good seal. Alright, so they're ready to be tightened. Alright, so I'm going to cover them up and I'll be ready to take the rings off in 12 to 24 hours when they've cooled. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want to, you can like and subscribe to my channel. I have lots of chicken content on here and some gardening and some cooking stuff. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And I'll see you guys on the next vlog.